So from all the surgeries you've done, from everything you understand in the brain, how much does neuroplasticity come into play? How adaptable is the brain? For example, just even in the case of healing from surgery or adapting to the post-surgery situation? The answer that is sad for me and uh, other people of my demographic is that, you know, the plasticity decreases with age, yeah. healing decreases with age. Yeah. Uh, I have too much gray hair to uh, to be optimistic about that. There are theoretical ways to increase plasticity using electrical stimulation. Uh, nothing that is, you know, totally proven out as a robust enough mechanism to offer widely to people. But um, yeah, I think I think there's cause for optimism that we might find something useful in terms of, say, an implanted electrode that improves learning. Um, certainly there's been some really amazing work recently from uh, Nicholas Schiff, Jonathan Baker, you know, and others uh, who have a, a cohort of patients with moderate traumatic brain injury who have had electrodes placed in the uh, deep nucleus in the brain called the central median nucleus or just near the central median nucleus. And when they apply small amounts of electricity to that part of the brain, it's almost like electronic caffeine. They're able to improve people's attention and focus. Um, they're able to improve how well people can perform a task. I think in one case, someone who was unable to work after the device was turned on, they were able to get a job. Uh, and that's sort of you know, one of the holy grails uh, for me with Neuralink and other technologies like this is from a purely utilitarian standpoint, um, can we can we make people able to take care of themselves and their families economically again? Can we make it so someone who's fully dependent and even maybe requires a lot of caregiver resources, can we put them in a position to be fully independent, taking care of themselves, giving back to their communities. Um, I think I think that's a very compelling uh, proposition and what motivates a lot of what I do and what a lot of the people at Neuralink are working for. It's just a cool possibility that if you put a Neuralink in there, that the brain adapts, like the, the other part of the brain adapts too. Yeah. And integrates it. The, the, the capacity of the brain to do that is really interesting. Probably unknown to the degree to which you can do that. But you're now connecting an external thing to it, especially uh, once it's doing uh, stimulation. Like the the biological brain and the uh, the electronic brain outside of it working together, like the possibilities there are really interesting. Yeah. It's still unknown, but interesting. It feels like the brain is really good at adapting to whatever. Yeah. But of course it is a system that by itself is already, uh, like everything serves a purpose. And so you don't wanna mess with it too much. Yeah, it's like, you know, eliminating a species from, a, from an ecology, you know, you don't know what the delicate interconnections and dependencies are. Um, the brain is certainly a, a, a delicate complex beast and we don't know, uh, you know, every potential downstream consequence of, of a single uh, change that we make.